Okay, this is 15.7 number seven, and this is another problem on uh, doing a substitution to uh, transform our variables. Okay, so here's the integral. It's another uh, volume problem uh, where we've got a, a flat planar region. The region here is mighty unpleasant, and even the capping function isn't so friendly. Y sine of x, y, dx, dy. And then uh, this is the suggested transformation. So first I want to show you what the integratable area looks like, and you can see why uh, this one is best done by transformation. Although as an exercise, you should try doing this one with no uh, transformation. It actually doesn't turn out to be too bad. Okay, so these guys are hyperbolas. They're hyperbolas in the first and third quadrant. So one of them lies really close to the axis. That's x equals 1 and the other one lies a little further out. That's x equals four. They both go asymptotic after a while, but we never really get there because the other two limits, again, this is the x, y plane, is uh, the planes y equals four and y equals one. And you can see what this does is it sort of defines this area between the two hyperbolas and above and below the two planes. And remember, we're looking down on it. So this is really a column whose cap is defined by this function. Uh, as you can see, this one's difficult. Like, I, I, you know, I wouldn't want to necessarily have to pursue this, although if you think about it in the right way and integrate in the right way, it doesn't turn out to be that bad. Uh, nonetheless, here's what we want to do with it. We want to go ahead and make this direct substitution. So let's see how we'd go about doing that. Uh, so first, what we want to do is take the argument and transform it. So if it's y sine of xy, what that's, what's that going to be? Well, y is v sine and xy is uh, u over v times v, so that'll just be u. And you can see it's v sine u. So boy, this got a whole lot easier looking right off the bat. So that's what we're gonna integrate. Uh, we're gonna need to find the Jacobian, and of course, we've got the functions that'll help us find it. So let's find those first, and then we'll talk about how we can transform these limits into uh, the limits in our new plane. So uh, first, the Jacobian. So remember, it's gonna be f, u, g, u, uh, f, v, g, v, and we want the two by two matrix of that absolute value. So what are these? Well, f, u, uh, that's just one over v, and then g, u is zero. Uh, f, v is a little tricky. That's u times v to the minus one, so it's minus u, v to the minus two but that doesn't matter because it's about to be multiplied by zero, and GV is just one. So there it is, and the Jacobian just turns out to be one over V. The other cross is zero, so there it is. And you can see in this case it's functional, and it's not only functional, but look what a great thing it does. If I multiply this by my argument, the V's gone. Now I'm just integrating sine of U. So you can start to see how, boy, this transformation is pretty powerful. It changed y sine xy into sine of u. That's worthwhile right there. Well, in this case, uh, again, I'm not going to necessarily use these limits from the plane. Instead, I actually want to use these and see how they relate to our function. So when xy was equal to 1, well, xy, the product of xy, is just u. So u equals 1. And when xy, the outer hyperbola, when that was 4, well, that just means u is equal to 4. Uh, and look at the other ones. y is 1 and 4. Well, y equals v. So when y equals 1, that means v equals 1. And when y equals 4, well, that means v equals 4. So while we didn't really get to take like credit for what a great transformation this is, look at what he did. It took this horrible area in the plane, and it made this out of it. I mean, this is uh, u, and this is v, and basically between 1 and 4, it made a little square. Like, this is it. This is the region that we're going to integrate within. So our limits are from 1 to 4 in both u and v. So it's the integral from 1 to 4, integral from 1 to 4. It's this argument times the Jacobian. So it's v sine u times 1 over v, or just sine u, and it's du, dv. I don't have to worry about order because they're both the same. So you can see the power of this 
ability to transform into a new set of variables. It maps what can be a very difficult area or a very difficult capping function, and ideally it turns it into a rectangle so that we're like doing the simplest possible multidimensional integration that we possibly could. Now, does it take some work to get there? Yeah, it does. But that work is often really worth it because you can either integrate this area with this cap or you can integrate this area with this cap. I know which one I'm choosing. Okay, when you go through the steps to do this, you get an answer of three times the cosine of one minus the cosine of four. That's it.